Good morning. Beautiful, beautiful fall morning. What a glorious day. Welcome to you and to all of you visiting us online. So glad that you could join us today. Would you please stand so we could um, sing our opening hymn, Be Thou My Vision. join me in our call to worship. We gather here to worship, seeking a focus for our being. God calls us to worship the word made flesh. We gather here to worship, though we feel drawn in too many directions, overwhelmed with too many tasks, chasing after something we can't quite name. And God calls us to worship, leaning into the spirit of truth. We gather here to worship, wondering and hoping, doubting and uncertain, frustrated and afraid, but here we are. God calls us to worship with our whole selves. We are here. Let us worship with joy. Please join me in the opening prayer. Lord, everywhere we look, we see the imprint of your creative love. The wondrous works of nature show your majesty. As we gather today to celebrate your love and creation, keep us mindful that we are part of that created order. 
meant to be stewards and not destroyers. Prepare us to work for you in ministries of peace and justice. Amen. You may be seated in if our said in our story for today that the woman went to see a judge and she said to him there is this man and he is not being fair to me give me my rights well at first that judge refused to do anything at all but the woman kept asking him finally the judge said this woman is bothering me I will see that she gets her rights and she will not bother me until I'm worn out. After Jesus told that story of the woman and the judge, he told his disciples and the people around him, listen, learn a lesson from this judge. God's people cry out to God night and day and God will always give them what is right and God will not be slow to answer them. I tell you, God will help people quickly. Isn't that a good promise that Jesus taught us? Have you ever found yourself in a situation that was just so hard you wanted to give up? And work maybe sometimes? Trying to learn a new sport thing like a new slide or a new pitch in baseball or a new kick in soccer? And it's so hard, it's so hard, and it's so hard you can't get it. So perhaps you and a friend had a disagreement and you couldn't work it out. Does that make you wanna give up? Maybe just give up on that friend if you can't fix things? What Jesus wants us to learn from our story today is that God loves us and wants to do great things for us. God wants what is best for us. So God has the wisdom to know what's best. So God is telling us to never give up. Just ask God for help. Let us pray. Dear God, when things be, seem too big for us, too hard to finish, Lord, we ask you to never let us give up. Give us the strength to carry on. And we pray this in your son's name. And while they're doing that, I'm going to see if I'm plugged in. I now have a green light. 
It might help if the pastor turns it on, huh? I don't know how you guys put up with me sometimes. As we come into our time, hello church. Hello church on Zoom. It is good to see you this morning. Go FCC! That's a joy we have today, by the way. FCC is advancing to round two of the playoffs that nobody ever dreamed we would even get to. So, it's exciting. I do have a couple of prayer concerns to share with you. Some new ones that are not on our list this week. Well, this week, for our local prayers, I thought I'd get real local. And we are praying this week for our search committee. They are already behind the scenes, hard at work, discerning the next settled pastor for Compass Christian Church. Regionally, we continue to pray for safety from threats of attack and violence in our local schools, our community, and our region. And globally, today, we pray for Christians in Korea and those that work with, work with the Durabang to protect women in Korea's health and safety. May they be a center essential to God's plan. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for this time of prayer by singing together a pretty upbeat version of Lord, Listen to Your Children Praying. a few moments together in silent prayer, lifting before God our own joys and concerns and laying at God's feet our own sins and repentances. After I pray our, Lord, our pastoral prayer aloud, we'll say our Lord's Prayer together. And this morning I invite you to pray that prayer using any words or language that you feel comfortable praying this morning. Let us pray together.
God bless our homes with the joy of your presence. Strengthen our covenants of family and of faith, that our children may grow into fullness of faith, that together we may show forth your praise in our world through our deeds and words of love and compassion, especially with those who are alone and lonely. God, we ask that you let your grace be seen in this seed time and in harvest, in labor and in business, in leisure and rest, in arts and culture of our people. May all who do work find fulfillment of their vocations, and all who are in need of work find the relief of new endeavors. Hear our prayers, O oh God, for those whom we name before you and for others whom we love, whose needs we lift to you in silence along with our own. Comfort those who sorrow and are in need, sickness or in adversity. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in mourning and to all give your peace. For these and all our prayers we bring to you in the name of Jesus our Christ who taught us to pray saying, Our Father, Our scripture reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my accuser. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? May the Lord bless our hearing and receiving of the word. Would you pray with me? And now, O oh God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Any of us might have had an experience like this persistent widow in the gospel reading from Luke today. If you have ever had to deal with an insurance company or a government agency, or the DMV, or in some cases even a child school, or a hospital, or a justice system, you might know how it feels to wonder, is anyone listening or responding to my needs? Is anyone listening to me? We all experience the microaggressions of bureaucracy, but sometimes our needs are serious, and the experience of feeling unheard in the middle of an emotional or desperate situation can be devastating. We can feel like Sisyphus 
in the famous myth, struggling to lift a heavy weight up a tall mountain. And just when we think we've reached the top, it rolls all the way back down and we're forced to start at the beginning again. More often than not, it is our persistence, our willingness to let things slide by, our unwillingness to let things slide by, our unwillingness to lose hope that does eventually lead to our success. It isn't always comfortable to keep advocating for what we need. And of course, it would be much easier if everyone with the authority or capability to do so would help. But at the end of the day, our constant reminders, our relentlessness, make a big difference in getting the job done. Like the persistent widow in the gospel, if we keep making our case, we may eventually get a response. Even if only because the people in charge are so annoyed that they just want to get us off their backs. History is full of people whose success can be directly attributed to their persistence. Tradition claims that Colonel Sanders of Kentucky Fried Chicken tried to sell his chicken recipe 1,007 times before it was eventually picked up. More heroic figures like Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, and Nelson Mandela sought justice and social change through careful, thoughtful, bold persistence. If any of these figures had gotten tired or burned out or had given up, which likely crossed their minds from time to time, we can easily say the world would be a, a different place today. The pursuit of justice requires perseverance. The ability of individuals and communities to persist in seeking justice can change the world. In the parable, the widow eventually gets what she wants even from the judge who, in his own words, had no fear of God and no respect for anyone. To be a widow in the ancient Near East was to be among the most vulnerable of society. As a widow, this woman would have had no advocate, no social standing upon which to plead her case. She was helpless in the deepest sense of the term. All she had was her will to persist, not to give up, to demand that someone listen to her. Sometimes, when we are most vulnerable, when we have the least to lose, we are also most likely to be bold. Despite the widow's marginalized status in society, she exhibited great strength. When have we felt that vulnerable? When have we noticed things in our lives or in the world around us that need to change? How have we found strength in a moment of desperation or great need? In what ways do we notice society beginning to respond to the cries or persistence of those who are bold enough to seek justice. The unrighteous judge in our story does eventually do what is right, but only because this nagging woman has made him feel trapped. He does not respond out of a changed heart. Very often, change is like this too social change that is the emancipation proclamation for instance did not immediately end slavery nor did it heal centuries of racial division and violence the voting rights act promised equity 
but it didn't change the hearts and minds of all American citizens. The end of colonialism or apartheid was just the first step in finding true independence and equality. Achieving justice is sometimes easier than changing the heart of a society. There is hope in getting justice, but there's always more work to do. We don't know what kind of justice the widow in this parable sought, but we can imagine that whatever social circumstances led to her being treated unfairly did not immediately disappear at the judge's ruling. The gospel assures us that God is not like the unrighteous judge. God does not respond to our needs only when we have pestered so much that it would be easier just to give in. The gospel says that God will vindicate us or bring us justice quickly, it adds. So how does God bring this justice? How does God respond to our prayers? God did not settle a court case for that woman, and God did not end slavery in the United States or pass legislation to protect the civil rights of all people. God did not end colonialism in India or apartheid in South Africa. No, that's our work. It's our job to persist, to advocate for ourselves when we feel helpless, to advocate for others when they are the most vulnerable. God's justice is much more comprehensive than what can be achieved through legislation or courts. The gospel promises us that God will respond to our prayers much faster than the unjust systems of society. If even an unrighteous judge can be merciful in the face of a persistent woman, then how much more merciful is the God who loves us and created us and knows every inch of our being. The promises of God in Scripture are hard to contend with. When societal justice comes so slowly and is often so limited, how can we believe that God is at work providing us with unbounded love mercy and speedy vindication where do we see that well god's vindication is not necessarily courtroom justice or even societal change though god is with us in those struggles we believe in a god who came to be with us and suffered alongside of humanity Jesus himself experienced injustice at the hands of a government that neither feared God or regarded man. We believe in a God who is always at work, changing hearts and minds, transforming lives, bringing dead things to life, term, turning the normal systems and power structures on their head making the weak strong and the vulnerable powerful and giving resounding voice to those who have been ignored for too long. God is in the cries of the helpless. Imagine the widow in the parable going to the judge again and again and again to plead her case. The judge ignored her. But God was with her the whole time. Keep going back, God says. Keep fighting. You may be weak by the standards of society, but you are strong and full of value to me. You are like me. 
because I also went unheard and unseen in the world. To those of us seeking justice, God says, I see you. I believe you. Your pain is my pain. Keep going back. Persist. The hope that we have, friends, in God is not the same as the hope we have in society. Society will change. Injustice will eventually end. But our hope in God is that God is with us through it all. That God hears us when we first cry out. That God loves us and that his love for us will give us the strength we need to persist. And finally, that God's justice will transform our lives and the hearts of everyone in the world. And to that, we can all say, Amen. Each week in the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, we give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you've never made that decision before, I invite you to do so today. As we sing a song, I'll meet you down front. I'll share with you a profession of faith that we find in Holy Scripture. And we'll look forward to your baptism in the near future. Maybe today you have made that decision, or one similar to it, and today you'd like to persist again and again and rededicate and reaffirm that commitment to Christ. We do it the same way. Or maybe today you'd like to make Compass Christian Church your church home. As we sing together and also prepare our minds for communion, let's make these decisions and sing the voice of Jesus calls his people. resurrection 
until I come again. Remember that all are invited today to partake of our communion. As you take the cups from the tray, the bread is in the bottom cup. Go ahead and eat that as it is passed to you. Hold on to the juice and we'll eat that, to drink that together. Remember, all of our communion is gluten-free, so all may partake. Let us pray. Dear God, we know we often lose faith and sometimes we want to give up. But when we come to this table, we are reminded that you never give up on us. We are reminded of your steadfast love given to us through Jesus Christ. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember Christ's love for the disciples and we celebrate Christ's love for us. Help us, God, through your spirit to live justly and lovingly and remain steadfast in our faith in you. are the gifts of God for the people of God, my friends. Thanks be to God. There are exciting things happening here at Compass Christian Church, and you are all a part of it. We are meeting needs in this community and we are welcoming people with love and acceptance. We have a pastor search committee who is already working hard to find the right pastor to lead us. And we have you, each of you, that are here to worship and fellowship together and support each other. I invite you to take this time to give your tithes and offerings to support the future of Compass Christian Church because there are great things to come.
to bless this offering and guide us to do your mission in this community. Amen. It has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We just have a couple of church life events to share today, and they are all kind of recurring. Wednesday morning at 1030, ladies, we gather for our disciples' women's gathering, studying the book Fierce. It is awesome. Um, if you need study guide questions to go along with that book, if you're reading it at home, let the office know and we can get that to you. Refit, under the direction of Laura Daly, um, goes on right over here with the strobe light on Wednesdays at 530. We have actually had a family, a mom and three daughters, three daughters, no, two daughters and a son who have been with us now for two straight weeks. So keep this, this ministry in your heart and in your prayers. It's yet another way to reach our community. And this is an important announcement. And I, and I know it's been in the Wednesday weekly email. It's not going to be in there anymore because we're kind of at our last hope. <clears throat> We would like to share our building with people who need to rent it for space and use it in this community. And it's becoming a popular place to be, but we will not be able to do that if we can't get some building hosts. That is someone to open the doors, to be here during the event, just to ask questions, help show them where the garbage cans and things like that are. Um, if you are willing to do that on occasion, we need a list that we can go to when someone says, I need it on this day. We can go to our list, ask two or three people, are you available, are you available? So we can continue to offer this building to our community. Please contact Lauren this week if you can be added to that list. And that's it. I do believe that's it. Any other announcements? Any announcements from Zoom or the media? Let's all stand together for our closing song and benediction. to ensure that justice prevails. Go forth knowing that you are heard and you can hear. God is with you. Now go with God. Amen.